I just painted a troll. For no, you know, specific reason. But I don't think you always have to have a reason. I mean, it's a hobby. But painting the troll, I actually learned quite a lot. And I believe that some of it might actually be useful for someone else as well. Given some of my videos, I might come across as some stone cold accountant advocating for total efficiency. This is not really true. The most obvious reason to paint a troll would be that the, the old world orcs and goblins are about to be set loose, but that's not really it. The observant of you have already spotted that this troll is on a round base. Not that it matters when it comes to the painting though. Whatever I mention in this video can obviously also be applied for a miniature heading for the old world. I just had to go with the darkest dungeon, a game which I find aesthetically pleasing. The obvious thought was that how would I paint in order to you know recreate this style? I started out with a regular spray can senatal and then putting black in the recesses just to realize that I've done that many times before and it's never looked like something from the darkest dungeon. If I want to paint something that does not look like my regular paint jobs I should probably do it in some other way, right? Instead, I started out with a base color. The inspiration I got from the darkest dungeon was some, you know, random dark room where there was a strong tint of both green and blue. Some kind of mixture of these. I tried, you know, paints gray together with the yellow to make a desaturated green. Kind of like, you know, steel blue but with green. Probably has a name as well. It looked right at the palette, but once it was on a troll, it was apparent that it was way too vibrant and green. The first attempt to, of correction was to put some thinner in, to make it a bit more translucent. But it was still too green. I did however note that there was an increased influence of the senatal preparation. I then rubbed in some pure blue to adjust the tone. Yes, with all colors you can do such a thing. It transformed it into some sort of dark turquoise, but it was still not, you know, very muted. I reached my white to dilute it, but then I remembered that, well, I should know better. According to color theory, red would probably be the better option. One of my favorite colors is oxide red. It is in itself a bit muted, and the one I have is a bit translucent as well, which in this case it would just be, you know, an asset. In hindsight, this was a really good choice. Not only did it dial down the turquoise, but uh, while rubbing it into the existing color with a dash of thinner, I noted that the color had turned acquired a consistency where it spread thin over the raised bits and thicker in the recesses. I have very limited experience with contrast paints, but I believe I just invented oil contrast. Most likely it has already been invented by someone, you know, like in 15th century Italy and, and some guy in China 800 years prior to that. It also got uh, rediscovered in the 19th century and then got a fancy academic art name. It's always like that. But just in case it uh, has not, I will now name it uh, Cone Oil. Don't ask me about the ratios because I have no clue and I was also kind of busy evaluating that I forgot to record a bit of the work. Rather unfortunate. But trust me, it was very nice. Unlike regular contrast paint, I was in no hurry whatsoever. And with the erasability of oil color in mind, I could just, you know, apply it in a seriously carefree manner. And you, know, you can go back and forth and, and if you're not happy you can add some, retract some, no worries. As you can see I used a pretty unprecise brush. Unfortunately oil colors are also quite shiny when still wet and it's very hard to tell from the, this footage how well it actually worked. I might have to come back to this idea at some point and experiment a bit more and then I might figure out how to capture it. 
but now it was time to move on with the rest of the base colors. Here I just want to emphasize how nice it is using oils as you can just go in with a bit of white spirit and remove any paint that is in the wrong place. There's not much to say about the rest of the colors though. Uh, they were applied in a very similar manner and we can skip right to the next part. Just to set a bit of background for the colors, I will quickly tell you why this draw. I always keep a few one-off miniatures in case I you know, suddenly find myself in the kind of situation that led to this video. This troll I've been seeing around for the better part of a year now, I think. My actual favorite is the stone troll, but I've already painted one of those in a more, you know, traditional acrylic way. I've seen them preview some other trolls, painted grey as well. I don't believe that they are new as they would have made a much bigger deal out of them, but I suppose things like that can happen if you're away for 20 years. The trolls in general and the stone trolls in particular are some of my, you know, absolute favorite Games Workshop miniatures of, you know, all time. And I must admit that running an old troll army is tempting. Unlike the dwarves, so far they have been pretty spot on when it comes to bringing back miniatures that I don't really care for. But in a sense, that's a nice thing because you know, uh, starting a new army while you haven't finished your first one or, or not even had a full game yet. That is just bad judgment. The reason I picked him up this time was because I had an idea about the desired color that coincided with what I inspired me in the Darkest Dungeon. The idea for this river troll was to paint it a bit more blue than official paint jobs to see if that would make it a bit more fish-like. So today was his lucky day. As you can see it still looks quite green but now comes what often is my favorite part. It is commonly known that you cannot dry brush with oils. I am not sure that is entirely true, but for now let's say that you can't. It is not really a problem, because with oils you can have something even better. Smudge brush. It probably also have a more fancy academic word, but this is what I call it. The explanation is very simple. As a preparation, make sure that the oil paint on your miniature is not too thick, especially on the raised bit. You then load your brush with a full load of, usually, a brighter color. In this case, it is a desaturated light blue to bring the appearance of, of the skin over from green to turquoise. You work your way around the miniature, depositing a lot of paint where you want to introduce the color. You can use normal brush control, but only ever dab the miniature, do not drag your brush. In essence, you're doing heavy stippling. When you have worked around the entire miniature, you come around and start making more and more brush-like moves. I'm not sure how to explain when and how much color should go where, but it's quite a forgiving method and it should not take too many attempts before you get a sort of gut feeling. I really enjoy it, you should give it a try. In the end, we have a much brighter and bluish troll. And that brings us to my main discovery when examining the style of the Darkest Dungeon. In the Darkest Dungeon, the most apparent colors are striking vibrant accents surrounded by pure black. And this is the overall expression that you get. But when you look a bit closer, there are a lot of colors that are muted and not very dark at all. But with the correct framing, this nonetheless conveys the feeling of darkness. In the dark, colors are muted. I really believe that this is the very same thing as when you do a chromatic black foundation of a proper grimdark miniature, if there is a, such a definition. So now, when we have a quite well painted miniature, it is time for the last, but very crucial step. At least if you want the darkest dungeon vibe. It might sound ridiculously dangerous, but now you load up your brush with pure black and trace all the crevices on the miniature. I've often done this um, as a part of a dark smudge brush, and you will probably be surprised how rare it is to fail. When your brush is in a crevice, it will naturally follow along. This time, however, I did not blend with the base color. This could probably be a convoluted way of saying to a thick panel line. 
Anyway, I really enjoyed this part. And looking at him now, I think he's actually pretty close to what I had in mind. Perhaps I could have done the scales in some other color or, or a bit shiny or something. But um, such is the nature of these sort of one-off paints. They should be finished in one sitting. Otherwise they run a really high risk of getting stuck in some sort of pile of shame. Sorry to bring out that boring accountant again, but on the other hand, you know, let's just have a look at him because I think this Darkest Dungeon style is actually pretty fit for the, the more loony side of orcs and goblins. Perhaps it's even its own thing, you know, it's, it's kind of a dark loon or something. I don't know what you call that, but loony and grimdark had a child. It is this goblin. Troll, sorry. This ugly troll. With that said, I will leave you with this stinking fish monster and... You know, whatever you do, don't forget to enjoy your hobby.